Hello everybody! Good morning! Kamusta po ang inyong Wednesday or Tuesday night for those who are at the other side of the world? Magandang umaga at magandang gabi po sa lahat. Yung, yung topic natin today is about ketones. Everything you need to know about ketones. Or I think as much as I can remember for now. Anyway, if we have supplementary information about ketones na hindi natin madediscuss ngayon, those are usually tackled na din in our either previous videos or in our master class of course. But anyhow, I want you to get to know more kung ano yung ketones at kung bakit kailangan natin siyang malaman, bakit kailangan natin siyang hindi katakutan, and how can we maximize the benefits of fueling on ketones. Okay, so starting from the basic and then we can move on a little sa mga medyo advanced. So I think marami nang aware kung ano yung ketones. But for first timers, welcome to our page, welcome to our community, to our moderators and admins, kindly share this to our groups para po ma-update ma lahat. And also, importante then that this supplemental knowledge will be shared by everyone. So, to start, ano yung ketones? So, ketones is in layman's term, acetone. Okay? Ano yung acetone? Yun yung kinukuha natin sa ating, ano, diba? Sa ating nail polish. But, acetone is naturally produced in our system. Although, hindi siya ganun ka-concentrated at hindi siya ganun ka-strong in form because it's pure form kapag yung tinatanggal natin sa ating uh, nail polish. But, ang acetone or ketone sa ating katawan, tatlong form yan. There's acetone, there's acetoacid, and there is 3-hydroxybutyrate. Okay? So, tatlong klase. But, generally, they are called ketone bodies. Okay? So, ketone bodies or keto acids. Okay? So, that's why by its name na keto acid, kung ilalagay natin yan sa pH na spectrum, it is more on the acidic side and not on the basic. If you will search Google about ketones, kung ano yung ketones, yung ibibigay sa yung answer, it's a a molecule or chemical that is being produced sa ating katawan so ginagawa siya mismo ng ating katawan kapag deprived na tayo of glucose or kapag wala na tayong glucose o di kaya always associated with episodes of starvation kapag sinasabing nagpapagutom yung isang tao and then it is usually followed na it is dangerous it can be fatal meaning pwede siyang makamatay if sobrang taas yung kanyang level sa katawan and it is usually associated or linked to diabetes. So, parate yan naririnig, diabetic ketoacidosis. That's also the reason why doctors and healthcare professionals are against ketogenic, ketogenic diet or ketosis or the fact that ketones are mentioned or even just low carb thinking na eto ay makakalid sa fatal na ketoacidosis or DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. I myself, I understand, at hindi ako nag-discriminate sa other professionals like that because I used to be like that as well, like just barely three years ago. Ganon din ako mag -isip. The moment I hear about ketones, yung nasa isip agad, starvation period, yung sinasabing na-activate na yung <clears throat> ketosis and then you are already nearing dehydration at baka magka-coma ka na at baka pwedeng magkaroon mag, uh, ng more problematic forms yung isang tao. But when I learned it on my own, after medical school, and then wala na outside na of my training, I realized that ketones is not actually bad. Kasi yung katawan natin is so intelligent that it only activates ketogenesis or yung paggawa ng ketones kapag kailangan na talaga ito. Normally, on a normal person na hindi aware about low carb and, and fasting and ketogenic diet whatsoever, nagbe-burn sila ng ketones only when it is too late, especially sa mga diabetics. Kung meron kayong kilalang diabetic noon na mataba noon, o di kaya chubby, or just normal, and then until a certain ten point in their disease process, maybe after 10, 20, 15 years of being diabetic, bigla-bigla nyo silang nakitang bumagsak yung kanilang weight. Okay? And then, without intention ha, na hindi naglo-low carb, hindi nagpo-fasting, so sobrang payat na nila, nangangayayat sila. And when you smell them, they have this distinct fruity breath. Okay? Yung, yun yung acetone. Yun yung acetone sa kanilang katawan. Their body is actually fueling on ketones 
but this is the one that is dangerous kasi yung katawan nila mataas sa blood sugar and at the same time mataas din sa keto acid so yun yung danger because too much sugar and in the form of glucose no too much blood glucose and too much blood ketones at the same time that can lead into very low acidic pH okay so kapag sobrang taas na ng pH ng katawan so the very high in acidity yun yung nagkaka ng complications however ano yung mangyayari kapag yung isang tao naglo low carb o nagpa fasting o di kaya nag-aavoid lang ng <clears throat> ng carbohydrates ng glucose anything that spikes in uh, that spikes blood sugar so whenever we say anything that spikes blood sugar mostly it is related to food it is related to food intake like kanin paborito ng pinoy umaga ngayon pandesal pinapay wheat bread noon pandesal lang ngayon medyo social na naka wheat bread na pero it's all the same pareho lang silang carbohydrates anyway hindi lang po pagkain stress can also increase your blood sugar so kaya as much as possible try to do some stress relieving exercises those are usually tackled in our master class however in our pub public public page no uh, since most of our followers are in it because of health related to food intake so we'll focus on food intake but if, if you wish to know more about wellness about stress management and all those and the deeper part of nutrition and fasting i encourage you to join our master class we have two sets, 14 day and 21 day. Kahit yung 14 days lang muna, pauna lang. It's more of the intensive initial phase, basic part of low carb and fasting so that kapag sinimulan nyo ito, you do it the right way, with the right mindset. And kapag susundin nyo lang talaga, panoorin nyo lang yung videos, the classes that we have online that you can watch on demand, hmm, the success rate is really, really almost 100%. But of course, sabi nga natin, what we offer to you, it's just you you 50% of the job the other 50% will be on your end. anyway moving forward stress can also induce elevated blood sugar and that elevation of blood sugar can lead into many problems like inflammation anyway so kapag na tumataas yung blood sugar mo yung insulin mo mataas din and kapag yung insulin mo sa katawan mataas din hindi hindi po magagamit yung taba sa ating sa ating katawan no? because it will block ketogenesis or lipolysis. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Kapag mataas yung sugar, mataas yung insulin, mabablock. Okay? Mabablock yung pagbaburn ng taba sa ating katawan. Why? Because insulin is a fat storing hormone. Ito yung hormone na nagdidikta sa ating katawan that as long as it is there, hindi po magagamit yung taba natin as energy because eto i-prioritize niya parate yung glucose lang as a source of energy. It will be glucose dependent. Yung kanyang sole purpose lang is to make sure na ang gagamitin nating pagkain for our energy will be coming from glucose and not from fat. So yung taba natin sa katawan, only very minimal yung, yung nakukuha doon. Because it will reserve that. It will reserve niya yan for the rainy days, for the fasting season, for the famine season. Na hindi na nangyayari ngayon. Kasi nga, hindi naman tayo nagpa-fasting na. Unless, of course, you are part of our group and who have been practicing na talaga fasting, intermittent fasting, and extended fasting. So, yung isang spray lang yung gawin natin, pababain natin yung ating insulin. <clears throat> and the best way to do that is pababain natin yung ating blood sugar through our food intake. At bakit natin ito gustong pagbabain? Because the moment that insulin is low, doon na po yung magic mangyayari. Marami ng lowered inflammation, magiging mababa yung blood sugar nyo. Hindi ito mababa na hypoglycemia ha, but mababa na stable lang. Because meron niyang pang-guard yung ating katawan that it will not actually go into real hypoglycemia kasi merong gluconeogenesis. It will activate that mechanism na yung katawan natin magproproduce ng kanyang sariling glucose kung kailangan na talaga habang nag adjust ka pa. Kasi alam niya na meron talagang panahon na wala tayong makain and it's okay. Yung katawan natin maraming cells yan. Meron tayong muscles, meron tayong fats, meron tayong kidney cells, liver cells, heart cells, brain cells, lahat ng cells sa katawan. Marami yan. 
and those cells on a normal diet. They are mostly fueling on heat on glucose, except for minimal, like our heart. Our heart actually mostly fuel on fats, on fatty acids. So, nakikita mo kung gano'ng kaimportante yung fats, yung heart natin mismo, if it's already, if you are lowering your fat sa katawan, and or blocking, nagbablock ka ng fat burning sa katawan, it will actually force your heart to just consume glucose. And the problem of consuming glucose, kapag binobombard mo yung puso mo, that is not the designed fuel for your heart. And that is where one of the many problems where, why there is heart disease. Because our heart, our cardiac muscles, are supposedly more preference niya. Mas, mag, mas gusto niya sana yung nagpo-fuel siya on fatty acids. Okay? So, yung, yun, yung, yun yung basis why people, why some people, why most majority right now of health information that you find on the internet, sinasabi na essential yung glucose o di kaya kailangan siya para mabuhay, kailangan siya for us to have energy. But what they don't know is that majority of the cells in our body, say for example around 80 to 90 percent of the cells in our body, are actually capable of shifting. Hindi tayo parang sasakyan na diesel lang o di kaya gasoline lang. Our body is actually more intelligent than that. Na kung ang available na, na fuel is diesel lang, so yun yung gagamitin niya. The moment it's already not available, it can actually activate another fuel mechanism source, which is ketones. Okay? So, dalawa yung major source natin. Actually, marami. Meron tayong alcohol, Meron din. The proteins can also be converted into no, into into glucose for energy. But generally, it's either you're on glucose metabolism or you're in your fat metabolism. And ang pinaka-importante aspect of this is for us to understand that as long as we keep on feeding glucose, as long as kumakain tayo ng glucose and we are making our body get used, no, masanay, and be dependent sa glucose as a source of energy, hindi hindi po ma-activate yung ating fat burning mode, yung ating mechanism to burn fat. Those are blocked by insulin. Unless, if it's already on the super end stage, wherein gutom na gutom na talaga, desperate na desperate na yung inyong katawan, that it will actually override. Mag-override siya sa mechanism of even kahit sobrang dami na ng glucose, but dahil hindi na sila makapasok o hindi na magagamit ng katawan, na-override at na-activate yung ketosis or ketone formation. Yun yung nangyayari sa mga diabetic kasi sobrang taas ng kanilang blood sugar in the in their bloodstream pero because of insulin resistance, hindi na nila maipasok ito sa kanilang cells. And the cells is, is, deprived, is starving to a point na very desperate na po ito and hindi na siya hindi na siya makaintay ng glucose na makapasok so kahit sobrang taas pa ng glucose sa bloodstream okay it will activate ketosis so para makakain ito and and yun yung delikado kapag hindi na hindi na monitor na where in sa blood sugar mo meron sa blood mo meron mataas na sugar and magkakaroon din ng mataas na ketones okay so when you are actually doing it deliberately on the right reason Okay? You can maximize. Yung importante lang po, pababain muna yung blood sugar. So, as much as possible, even if I myself no, started with fasting, at later na akong, later na akong nag, nag go into really strict low carb. Okay? But that was because hindi talaga ako diabetic. Wala akong, wala akong episodes of really shooting up blood sugar. The shooting up, we mean 300, 400, 500. Yun, ganun talaga kataas yung mga, ano, yung mga, mga diabetics na uncontrolled. So, when I did fasting, kahit pa in two days, three days, I'll be in full ketosis. Ibig sabihin, in two, three days time, majority of my fuel source nagagaling na sa ketones. Wala akong risk of DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, because yung blood sugar ko is just nor- normal or mababa lang in the first place. When you do fasting, bababa yung, yung blood sugar, mawawala siya in your system. That is it will already become less and less at yung gagamit nito are just the 10, 10 to 15% of your cells in the body na glucose obligate, ha? 
meron talaga mga cells sa katawan natin na sila lang yung kailangan ng glucose. So yes, normal na meron tayong kailangan i-maintain na glucose. But what is important is for us to know na yung glucose na ito na kailangan ng katawan natin is only very minimal at kayang-kaya yan supplyan ng ating liver through endogenous glucose production. Yung ginagawa niya, yung kanyang sariling glucose mismo at hindi ito kailangan ng external glucose na kainin pa natin. Okay, so yung nangyayari kapag nagpa-fasting ka, eto yung nangyayari when you're fasting in the first two days. Ha? And if you are not fasting like straight fasting, like for example, if you are doing just low-carb diet, hindi ka nagpa-fasting more than 10-12 hours. So this can be stretched into two weeks to four weeks, okay? But if you are fasting, this can happen in two days. So the first day, mawawala yung inyong glucose na nasa blood mo. So yun yung unang babagsak. And then yun yung isa sa mga pinakamahirap na points because bumabagsak na yung blood sugar mo at wala ka pa rin alternative fuel source kasi nga hindi pa mataas yung yung ketone level because insulin will still be blocking your insulin your ketone production for up to 18 hours approximately 18 hours since yung last mong kuma kina, yung last kang kumain okay so during that first after that around 18 hours yun yung pinakamahirap for most na hindi pa sanay magfasting and then after that kapag hindi ka na give in because you were for example you are very very determined to really stabilize your blood sugar and lower your blood sugar na na kaya mo so yun ang mangyayari diyan yung mga glucose mo na storage sa katawan ma-activate and it's usually found in the liver so yung liver natin meron yung glycogen so the glycogen there it's a storage form of carbohydrate na kapag na-activate na, ito mabubroken down. Para siyang uh, branches of trees. And then, bibiakin mo paliit ng paliit para masunog mo ito. Gawin mong panggatong. Okay? Para magawin mo siya, magawa mo siyang pang-energy. And the liver, liver's capacity of glycogen, generally, is just enough for a person's capacity. Uh, it's just enough for a person's need for the day general need for the day for physical activity. So, ibig sabihin, if you are fasting, the first two days, nagpo-fuel ka pa rin on glucose. It's depleting, inuubos niya yung glucose na nasa bloodstream mo na, and then the next time would be the glucose coming from the glycogen sa iyong liver. And then, the moment na wala na sila, depleted na sila, yun yung pinakahinang-hina na yung mga tao. Kaya, uh, kaya seldom you can find people who can do fasting more than 24 hours, more so more than 48 hours. It's because they don't know what's happening in their body. Wala silang alam kung ano yung nangyari, wala silang alam kung ano yung effect, akala nila mamamatay na sila, akala nila yun, yung, yun na yung katapusan nila, because they don't know the science behind. And uh, this is just a basic one. If you want to know deeper, up to biochemical level talaga, what goes on in your body, in every part of your body, if you will join our 14-day masterclass, dun po, nahimay-himay natin doon. Okay? It's all detailed, it's all laid down there. Anyway, to cut the story short, usually hangga, sa third day lang, sa third day pa lang nagsisimula yung full ketone ketosis, okay? So kapag nagkiketosis ka na, meaning gumagawa na ng, ng ketones yung katawan mo, nagbe-burn ka na ng fat, doon na naglumalabas yung, yung energy, meron ng mental clarity and all that. However, there is what we call as fat adaptation or keto adaptation. Hindi pa, kahit pa nagproproduce na ng ketones yung katawan mo, but your body is still not used. Hindi pa siya sanay na ketones yung ginagamit niya as energy. So what will happen is, mag, ano ka, mag ketone dumping. Ibig sabihin, kahit overproduction ka na ng ketones, but hindi pa siya magamit ng katawan mo kasi nga hindi pa siya sanay. Kasi nga, all your life, you will you are just, fueling on glucose, which was like me then, three years ago, okay? Noon, hindi rin, hindi rin kilala ng katawan ko si ketones. Okay, maybe a little, kasi mahilig, mahilig kaming kumain ng mataba eh. And there's uh, this nutritional ketosis wherein kapag kumakain ka ng matataas sa fat, you can actually activate ketogenes through nutrition sa pagkain. But anyway, our focus right now is general ketone formation. And yung Ito adaptation na yun, dito yung period na kung saan merong mga side effects na nakikita yung mga tao. Yung masakit yung kanilang ulo, nangihina, nagiging bad breath sila, meron silang 
bad body odor na yung parang fruity acetone breath. Ano pa ba? Meron silang keto rash, meron silang keto flu, nanghihina, ano pa yung mga keto, oh yung parang keto flu, yung parang nagkaka-flu ka talaga. Even if you are not really having flu. So, and kapag, when it comes naman to monitoring, so, usong-uso ngayon, no, yung urine ketone strip. Okay? So, umiihi sila, tapos nakita nila mataas na yung kanilang uh, ketone level sa urine. And people are, hmm, let's say, excited about that, na sobrang taas na ng kanilang ketone sa urine. And there's a lot of business benefiting from that. And generally, okay lang naman if it's done on the right purpose and the right knowledge. Pero sa totoo lang, hindi yan kailangan and it's quite useless, okay? Generally, hindi, yun, wala siyang kwenta because what you will find there, okay? It's just the ketones that you are dumping, the ketones that you are not using, okay? Yes, initially, makikita mo, if nagsisimula ka pa lang, you will be happy na mataas yung ketones mo sa iyong urine. Pero yung pinaka-importante dyan is that you are actually not measuring the ketone levels in your blood and the ketone levels that your body is using. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Ibig sabihin, you are just measuring yung amount ng basura sa inyong katawan based on ketones. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kung titingnan mo sa isang bahay, paano mo malalaman kung gano'ng karami yung pagkain nila? Titingnan mo ba kung ano yung kung ano yung yung bas, nasa basura nila, kung ilang pagkain ang nasa basura nila. Of course not. Initially, maybe, the hoarders, the people who are excited and are just buying everything. But the moment you become aware of this and the moment you are already stable in your life, alam mo na hindi ka kailangan mag, magsayang ng pera. So you will actually tend to conserve them. Okay? So seldom you can find evidence of abundance really in trash, okay? Sa, sa basura. So, just like in our body, yung pagkakita nyo ng ketones sa inyong ihi through using urine ketone strip, those are just the initial phase. Sa una pa lang yan, kapag nagda-dumping pa, kapag hindi pa fat adapted. But the moment you're already fat adapted, say for example, you are doing this for 6 months, 1 year, hindi mo na supposedly makikita yung ketones sa urine mo. Or kung makikita mo lang, plus one is already okay. Or trace ketones is already okay. Because that's an indicator na yung katawan mo, sanay na sa ketones as energy source, as energy fuel. And it's now starting to conserve it. Okay? Kinoconserve na niya. However, if matagal na kayong naglo-low carb at naglo-low carb and nagpa-fasting, and if you still check your urine ketones, tapos ang taas-taas pa din, Try to be honest with yourself and ask yourself if you were doing low-carb the right way or the safe way. Kasi uh, the, ten, the reason for that may be, parati kayong nagsi-cheat, parati kayong nag- lumalabas sa ketosis or you are not yet metabolically flexible, meaning yung katawan nyo hindi pa ganun ka-fully adapted to ketones, hindi din siya ganun ka-fully flexible to use glucose and ketones when whatever is available. So, you are dumping ketones. So, nangyayari ito at I think mostly sa mga taong nag-go into low-carb and fasting only for weight loss. Kasi when they already lose their weight and then they achieve their desired weight, akala nila safe na sila and they just eat carbs from time to time and then go back to fasting again and go back to low-carb again whenever they they feel na sobra yung pagkain nila. So, especially when they are eating high carb. But the weight may remain the same, pwede hindi na kayo tumaba ulit, but actually you are not helping your body when it comes to inflammation, when it comes to to really healing your cells at your body at the cellular level. Alam na alam ko kung sino mga tao na yan. As sila yung mga taong sobrang sexy and then sobrang gaganda ng ano, achieve, achieve na yung weight, pero bigla silang magpo-post. Doc, bakit mataas pa rin yung blood, sugar, blood pressure ko? Bakit meron pa rin akong pananakit sa katawan? Bakit meron pa rin akong ganito? Because actually, sa totoo lang, you can be honest with yourself. You are not doing it right. Or you're at least you are not doing it at the best practice level. Okay? So, it, it's either you know what to do, but hindi mo lang ginagawa. Or if ever you don't know what to do, then I encourage you to join our 14-day masterclass for you to be guided well. 
ang hindi kita pipigilan ko ano yung gusto mo but what i just want no is for our family and friends our loved ones to have an informed decision hindi pwedeng like a friend of mine nagpakita sa akin i sent him the the youtube video on why rice is in the caution list tapos nag-send siya sa akin ng video ng picture niyon I think cotton. I think I over, I exceeded my limit in a day just by eating this silog breakfast with two rice. Yung ganon. So my, uh, you might think na baka pagalitan ko or magpaparinig ako. Of course not. So sabi, sabi ko lang, it's okay as long as it's an informed decision. Decision mo yan. So I cannot do anything about it. Wala nga magawa sa iyo yung mama mo, di ba? Ako pa kaya and I'm not into the habit of mothering anyone. Anyway, so yung importante with ketones is for you to get to know your your body is already somewhat keto ad- keto adapted or fat adapted kapag alam mong wala ka nang craving sa sweet ha hindi ka na ganun kap hindi ka na parating gutom and then hindi ka nang hihina wala kang keto breath and body odor ng fruity uh, fruity breath or fruity body odor hindi ka na rin hindi ka rin na rin umiinit yung ulo, hindi nangihina, and then wala kang keto flu, wala kang keto rash, because keto rash yung pangangate, yung parang na-activate yung allergies, although related din siya sa food intake, which is the dirty keto na sinasabi nila, so mostly uh, mga like processed, processed meat, to some extent, sa iba, na-activate yung kanilang sensitivity to eggs and poultry products, eggs and chicken, and to some extent, cheese and dairies. Okay, so you have to be careful. That's why cheese and dairies, nasa caution list natin yan because it can be highly inflammatory for other people. I used to react to cheese and dairies as well, but good news, nung nag-DCR healing protocol kami, yung dry, uh, clean, and refeeding protocol namin, I think my gut really healed. Naging okay talaga. At never na ako naging bloated kahit kumakain ako ng nasa caution list, which is mostly naman, low carb pa din. The ones I eat in the caution list are still low carb, mostly mm, cheeses, cheese and dairies, okay, and occasional processed foods. Kung yun ang talaga yung available. Anyway, uh, with if you want to monitor your blood, your ketone level, better to get a blood ketone meter. It's quite expensive. Yung isang strip siguro you can spend around fifty to a hundred peso of ah parang a hundred peso per testing. Kasi ite test mo yung 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 blood glucose, and blood ketone. So, umiinit na ngayon, no? Kanina, I am here kasi mag-swimming ako and since mag pa kanina, I thought, uh, magpainit muna. Kaya lang marami pang tao. And, that's why, nag-live na lang muna ako. I'm not sure if we can transfer. Pero okay lang. It's vitamin D. Huwag na lang kasi baka mawala yung signal. Anyway, tapusin na lang muna natin to. If you really want to check for your ketones, it's best to get it together with your glucose. So, meron tayong tawag na glucose ketone index, sa GKI. The lower the GKI, the better you are in ketosis. So, why do we want to activate ketosis? When we activate ketosis, when we activate our ketogenesis, at kapag fully fueling na tayo ang glucose, the opportunity of our body to heal becomes exponential. Kasi ibig sabihin nito, ito ay parang mag activate yung parang nasa fasting mode na siya. Okay, and then when it is already in the fasting mode, uh, it will start scavenging. Mamamasura siya within our cells, in our cellular body. At dun niya kukunin yung mga siratirang mga misfolded proteins, yung mga basura na proteins, yung mga extra na mga nakadepositong mga material sa ating katawan. And anong ibig sabihin yan? It's actually cleansing in our body. More than anything, hindi kayo kailangan magbayad if you really want to detoxify to the real sense of detoxification, you can just fast, okay? Fasting is the most natural, cheapest, affordable, walang mag- magkakanegosyo sa'yo when you do that, okay? Yun yung pinaka very effective ways and most natural way to detoxify and the opportunity for our body to really heal, okay? But of course, don't take my word for it. Hindi ito... Hindi ito medical advice. This is just for educational purposes. I'm just sharing with you what I know and what I believe in and what I practice and what I what our family practices. And the decision to do it will be on you. And if you wish to be guided, yun nga, we have a program for that. And if you want it to be free, 
nandun, marami na pong groups ngayon on intermittent fasting, extended fasting, our group, Low Carb Feasting and Fasting Community, to guide you, okay, if you have questions. But of course, uh, we manage the group na ayaw namin makagive ng false information. So whenever you ask about medical conditions, specific specific condi- specific medical conditions, ay hindi na natin yan matatakpal, okay, because we don't want to send the wrong message sa mga silent readers na lurker lang at baka magkanya-kanya at mapahamak sila because they are not doing it the safe way. I'm not sure if you are still there. Hindi ko nakikita. Oh, nandiyan pa. 597 live viewers. Hello po. Thank you so much. And for that someone, I can see one comment na you already you contacted HIV before. Don't worry. HIV is not a life sentence. There is hope. You may not live HIV free but you can live as normal as you can be as long as your immune system is still good and it's still functioning and remember that the viruses in the viruses the bacteria are mostly are mostly just parang parasites and they feed on glucose so try to lower it down by making sure that your normal cells are feeding more than the the infected cells How to do that is you eat the food that they don't eat. And it's actually the fat and protein. And mostly a balance of fat and protein. Don't overconsume protein and avoid fats altogether. Okay, that's another problem that some people have because they, they, they prioritize proteins now because that's what we've been advising them. But they're still afraid of fat. And then when they do that, they don't understand, they don't realize na their body is actually just going into glucose burning again because proteins talaga hindi naman yan diretsong nagiging 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 energy proteins need to be broken down into amino acids and the amino acid okay merong glucogenic amino acid yung glucogenic amino acid yun yung mga amino acids na mako-convert into glucose and the vicious cycle can happen if, if you overconsume it okay So, medyo mainit na. Kailangan ko nang bumunta doon. And we are here. Yan. That's the capital. That's the capital. And then, the other side of the building, it's the mountain. Okay? So, I'm not sure if you can see. So, akyat muna tayo. Baka masunog na tayo dito. Baka hindi na ako tanggapin ni Mami. Hindi niya na ako kilala. Let's see. Ah, may tao pa. Hello. So, I think that's the most important part when it comes to our topic for today. Okay, meron pa pala. So, uh, with ketones, uh, if you want to check it, you better like check it from um, blood, glu- blood ketone meter. Pero hindi din siya required ha. For those who are thinking na required talaga. No, it's not a requirement. You are, there are like clinical, magtatago muna ako dito. There are clinical clinical signs or clinical uh, gauges of being in ketosis na hindi mo kailangang na hindi mo kailangang magmonitor. In fact, we only did ketone monitoring approximately just this year. Before, I did fasting for 7 days, 10 days, 12 days, even up to 14 days, okay? Nag-fasting ako for 14 days without monitoring my ketones. But because I know what to look for or what to what are the warning signs, what are the things that you should be looking at whenever it's happening, okay? So, whenever you do your fasting, para safe kayo. Marami, um, generally, kapag ginawa mo siya ng tama, there's no fear really. At alam ko naman, ang maganda sa fasting, kahit pa nakakatakot yan para sa iba. But you are actually in control. Anytime, you can just break a fast. Like now, I'm thinking of going into extended fasting. But it's no pressure. My brother asked me kung ilang araw yung gusto kong fasting. Sabi ko, no pressure. Wala lang. If I feel like hindi ko pala itutuloy, I can just break it. Anyway, that's the, the beauty of of doing fasting. Because you are in control. Ikaw lang talaga yung gumagawa. No? Hindi, hindi ibang tao. And then, it's not It's not for any other reason but for healing and the control that you become, no? Because before talaga, I don't have any problem naman with, ano, grabe. Gusto ng ganda-ganda yung hair niya. 
So we don't have any problem naman with when it comes to to other aspects, no? But when it comes to food, kasi we are a family of really uh, love eating, who really love eating. So whenever we eat, we really eat so much. So the practice of of fasting actually parang siya yung nag ng balance sa buhay namin because we were able to practice moderation. We were able to practice temperance and self-control. And yung isang aspect ng fasting that I don't usually talk about, but it's actually the one of the core reasons why I do fasting. It is for spiritual reasons, more psychological, psychological reasons, and mental health. And in general, we have this connection with a higher being and I feel like I am more in tune with myself and with the universe and with my spirituality whenever I do fasting. Kasi kapag nasa fasting ka, you are depriving yourself of the other unessential things that you can actually live without and focus ka sa mga bagay na sobrang importante lang talaga. So, you can do that when you are fueling on ketones. And of course, no, ketones, ketone fueling on ketones is like a signal in your body that you are on the, uh, what we consider as fasting mode. And hindi rin maganda that you will be on fasting mode forever. So when you do fuel on ketones, make sure it's for the right days, for the right time, and the right, and the right reason. At you know how to get back. Yung pinaka-importante about fasting is the refeeding. Halos walang namamatay na tao na naka-fast. But the people who have danger, dangerous, dangerous experiences or parang mga nakakatakot na experiences, it's after the refeeding. Yung hindi tama yung kanilang pag-break ng fast. The longer you fast, the gentler. Okay? Dapat mas gentle yung pag break nyo ng fast, okay? So, to avoid refeeding syndrome and the many other complications. But generally, yun yung mga kailangan nating bantayan sa ketones, okay? Uh, if I meron pa akong naaalala, we will just put it in supplement or we will discuss it in another time, another day. But generally, yun yun. Walang value, walang clinical value yung inyong pag-check ng urine ketones, especially if you're doing it long term. And unless yung gusto nyo na talaga, malaman kung gano'ng karami yung ketones na basura ninyo sa katawan, okay? But generally, it's of no clinical usage. And if you are having high elevated urine ketones, even if you are in low carbon fasting for so long, try to question and try to look into your food again kasi baka you are not actually doing it the right way or you've been cheating a lot, okay? So, yung importante is you get to know that. So, good morning, everyone. Good morning sa lahat. And... Uh, from Hong Kong, Mom she ems and Akash, and Ilad, and Smiley, and Paul, hello. But I can no longer check the other comments. Hindi ko alam kung bakit. But thank you so much. I hope you learned something today. I'll try to go live maybe around the same time para matapos ko muna yung morning ko. And then I can go on with my day. I'll see you more in the coming days. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a pleasant midweek. Stay low-carb, stay safe. Bye-bye.